Oh, yeah. Does anyone know what this is? A trash can. It's a trash can. You're correct, kids. This is a trash can. Okay? Open this up for a second. Now, what is this? A Bible. A Bible. Oh, our kids are really smart. <coughs> now, how would you feel? Would you be offended if I took this Bible and threw it in the garbage? Yes. You would be. Why? It's God's Word. It's God's Word. Okay, now here's, here's one of the things that I want us to really get to understanding. Is that this is God's Word. And the fact is, if we're unwilling to read it, if we're unwilling to believe it, if we're unwilling to live it, then we might as well just take our Bibles and throw them in the trash because that's ultimately what we're doing. And we would never want to do that. We understand this is so valuable to us. When we think about the grace that Randy was just talking about, one of the graces that God has given us is His Word. We understand that even faith which saves us is a grace from God. And the understanding of who God is and what He's done for us is a grace. And so we understand that we would never want to take a Bible and throw it in a garbage can. We would be offended. We'd be appalled. But if we don't read it, if we don't believe it, if we don't live it, then what good is it personally to us? Now, I'm going to ask you, I got some more questions. Let's see how smart you guys are. What's this? Scissors. Pair of scissors. Now, how many of you would be offended if I started opening up the Bible and be like, oh, this mentions about repentance. This mentions about homosexuality. This mentions about a few things. I don't like that part, so I start snipping at it. Would you be offended? Yeah. Why? It's God's word. It's God's word. But here's the issue. If we pick and choose what we are willing to believe, then it's pretty much we might as well just take a pair of scissors and take it to our Bibles and start cutting. You say, you know what? You know what? I don't think God really believes that. We don't really think God thinks that. That's not how God really is. Why don't I just correct the word of God and correct my view of God and just cut it out? We would be offended at that. Now, are there some things, are there some things in the Bible that are difficult to understand? Are there things that sometimes you read and you think, I don't understand that, and I may not necessarily essentially agree with it on first reading, but it's the wisdom of God's word, and it's right, it's holy. But if we're, un if we're only willing to look at certain passages of scripture, if we're not willing to read the Bible in its context, then we might as well just take a pair of scissors to the Bible. But we know we would never want to do that. What are these? Headphones. Headphones, okay. What if I start putting these on? Actually, I don't know if I know how to. <laughs> Who wears headphones like these anymore? Okay. Cover it up. And I'm listening to the music. I'm listening to the world. I'm listening to the wisdom of man. And I can't hear the word of God. Is that right? Now, how many of you... Have a, use the excuse, I'm too tired, I'm too busy to read the Word of God. Yeah. Okay? But you have no problem listening to the Seahawks game. And I love the Seahawks. Sad that they're losing right now. Got an update from Dylan about that. He's my ESPN commentator. You know, I, I'm, I'm, we listen to music. We listen to our favorite radio programs. Whatever it may be. But why is it that we're saying, we're li willing to listen to anything that we want, our music, whatever it may be, but we're not willing to listen to the Word of God. Why don't we open up our ears to that? No, everyone wants this miraculous sign for God to open up the clouds and say, Hey, Micah, this is God. What you're doing is wrong. I don't know about you, but that would scare me. You know, anytime God spoke to people like that, there was a level of fear. And you know, sometimes when we approach the Word of God, sometimes we, we know a lot of what's in the Bible, don't we? But we don't want to read it because we know what's in it. We'd rather just hear what we want to hear. We would rather just itch our ears. 
You know, I'm not that bad. God, God's okay with what I'm doing. God's okay with all of what I'm saying. God's okay with all the things that I believe. I don't want to listen to that. Okay? What about this? It's white out. Okay? You know, I disagree with the Bible. Why don't I just take the parts that I disagree with Put on a little bit of white out and then take a pen and start filling in what I want. Oh. Is that acceptable? No. But isn't that what we sometimes do? I mean, have you ever caught yourself saying things like, well, I don't think God would do that. Or I don't think God believes that. But then you read the Bible and be like, wow, God is disagreeing with what I'm saying. But I got to rectify that. I gotta rectify the Bible with science, so I'll just write out a few things. I gotta rectify my opinions of God, so I'll write out a few things. You know what? This is what I think God should think, God should do, what the church should be, what the church should do. I'm just gonna write out everything, take my little Sharpie marker, and I'm gonna start adding to the Word of God. Oh, man. How would you feel if I started passing out Bibles next week? With Micah edited versions. The gospel according to Micah. And I start filling it out. And, and you're reading in the notes and it says, Oh, you're saved by grace. And you have, you have to earn your salvation. <coughs> what if I did that? We'd be like, whoa. Then we're hopeless. And so we would not want to do that. Now how many of you own a Bible and, and, and have it in your home? Anyone own more than one Bible in their home? Nope. How about more than three? How, and so forth. You know, I try to have a Bible in every room. I even have them in a bathroom. It's, it's funny, you know? You, you want something good to read, you got it right there. And so one of the things that we want to do is, how often do you pick this up? Because do you know what we often do? We have so many of these lying around. God is trying to talk to us in every room. But we're not listening to him. Instead, what we do is we take this. We take dust. And we let our Bibles get covered with it. You know, I don't, I don't, know, I don't remember who posted this on their Facebook accounts. But I, I know a few members of our congregation posted a video of this group of Chinese Christians. And they're all surrounded in this empty white room. It's not a very fancy room. But when they opened it up, inside were a whole bunch of Bibles. And do you know what these Chinese believers did? They ran up to them and they were fighting over them and they were grabbing it and they were holding it like kids running after a broken pinata. And they were holding those Bibles and they were smelling their Bibles and they were hugging those Bibles, smelling all those new Bible chemicals that Randy was talking about. And, and they're hugging it and they're crying and, and it's just like, and I look at that and I think, why don't we have that hunger and thirst for righteousness? Why don't we have that hunger and thirst for the word of God? If it really is the sustenance for our spiritual lives, if it's the sustenance for life, why don't we go to it? Why don't we love it and cherish it and hug it and adore it? You know, I read the psalmist and they talk about how they dwell on it night and day and how they meditate on it and how they love it. Do we have that kind of love for God? Do we have that love for his word? You know, it's, it's interesting that so oftentimes people don't have a love for God and they wonder, why do I not love God as much as I should? And it's often because they stopped loving his word. You know, one of the things that we, we have discussed, we've covered Acts, the second chapter, verse 42, and we looked at four things that the church has been devoted themselves to. We covered the Lord's Supper. Today we're going to cover the apostles' teachings or the word of God. And one of the things that the apostles were doing in the early church was they were trying to create a church culture saying, you know what, we're committed to this. We're committed to the word of God. We're going to be a people of the book. We're going to hunger for this. You know, when I wake up in the morning, instead of opening up the sports section in the newspaper or reading my favorite gossip magazine, I don't have a favorite gossip magazine, but if I did, we should go to this instead. You know, one of the interesting things is, I've talked with a lot of ministers and elders 